we've all learned from TV what happens during crime scene investigation. The investigators come in, find a hair or a fingerprint that the culprit conveniently left at the scene, and then take it back to the lab, analyze it, and plug it into their computer, which tells them whose DNA it is and allows them to then go and arrest that person. However, that is not always how it happens in real life. In actuality, crime scene investigators do find DNA at the crime scenes and do take it back to their labs to be analyzed, but they can only establish whose DNA it is if they already have that person's genetic information stored in their computer system, meaning they have previously committed a crime. If the DNA they find does not pull up a match on their computer system, the police have no way of telling whose DNA it is and have to rely on other means to find the suspect. The DNA sits in the lab, not doing anything, not helping with their investigation, until they finally arrest the suspect, and then they can compare the suspect's DNA to the DNA they previously found to see if it is a match. But what if the police could actually use the DNA they find to help them with their investigation? The cool thing about DNA is that it can tell us so much about a person, so much more, in fact, than scientists have even begun to discover. So what secrets can DNA unlock about a person, and how can it help us transform the future of crime scene investigation? To start from the beginning, DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is basically just all of your genetic material. DNA is what tells your cells what proteins to make and when to use them. You inherit your genetic information from your parents, and that genetic information is encoded into genes, units of your DNA that hold different pieces of information about your genetic inheritance. All of your genes put together make up your genome, the complete set of your body's genetic instructions. DNA is made up of these little building blocks called nucleotides, which band together in pairs and form a huge twisting ladder called a double helix. There are four possible nucleotide building blocks that could potentially make up each rung of the ladder. A, adenine, and T, thymine, always pair together, and G, guanine, and C, cytosine, always pair together. And the ladder they form isn't short. In fact, your genome has a chain of nearly 3 billion nucleotides. Even though 99.9% .9 of these nucleotides are exactly the same in every human, the 0.1% that are different account for genetic variations between humans, which is why Taylor Swift has blue eyes while Justin Bieber has brown eyes. A lot of the differences between humans come from single nucleotide polymorphisms, also called SNPs which are areas in the human genome that can differ by one nucleotide building block from human to human. In other words, some humans might have an A right there, but others might have a C in that same spot. And these differences account for why humans have varied skin tones, eye color, hair color, and facial structures, among other features. But SNPs don't just affect the way we look. Take, for example, sickle cell anemia, a blood disease. Sickle cell anemia is caused only by a single SNP. 99.97% .97 of the American population has an A at a specific location in their genome. But for the 0.03% that have a T in that same spot, those people have sickle cell anemia. So one SNP in the whole genome really can have a big effect on your life and your body. And that's basically the same way that eye color, height, skin color, hair color, and all of those traits work. But it's even more complicated than that because those traits aren't just determined by a single SNP, but by a whole series of SNPs. Imagine tens, possibly hundreds, or even thousands of SNPs just dedicated to what eye color you have. Some of these SNPs we know about. Scientists have discovered through research that some SNPs have a large effect on what color skin someone will have, while other SNPs have a smaller effect on what color eyes that person will have. But some of those SNPs still have yet to be discovered. We know that different humans might have different nucleotide building blocks at specific locations, but we just don't know which of those SNPs correlate to which genetic traits or how significant those correlations are. So that's what scientists are working to discover right now. And for some characteristics, they are pretty close, like with eye color. There is a lot of information out there about what SNPs can affect your eye color and how big that effect is for each different SNP. But for other characteristics, like the shape and concavity of your face, there is far less information out there. And so if we were able to discover exactly what traits every single one of our 3 billion nucleotides codes for, and how our genes work together to create who we are as human beings, that could lead to even more discoveries and would open the doors to a whole bunch of other possibilities. In the future, 
Maybe we will be able to know how tall our baby will be, and what color eyes they will have, how high their IQ will be, and what they will look like when they are 20 years old, before they are even born, just by taking the fetus's newly formed DNA from its mother's womb and analyzing it. Maybe we will be able to find a lost sweater in the hallway at school and figure out exactly who it belongs to because of a hair the owner left on their sleeve. But most importantly, say we are back at that crime scene and the investigators find that strand of hair. Instead of analyzing it to see if there's a person in their computer system to match it, maybe the investigators could use the hair itself to find out where it came from. They could look at all of the various snips in the genome to determine who exactly left the hair at the crime scene, how tall they are, what kind of hair they have, how likely they are to be obese, how big their nose is, the shape of their chin, and a million other characteristics that would lead the police directly to the culprit. The possibilities are endless, and I believe that in the future, this technology can be used by police forces and scientists around the world to change the way we gather personal information and keep our population safe.